And joining us now is Professor Ephraim Inbar from Bar Ilan University. Professor Inbar, this was the first visit of an Israeli minister to Kiev since the start of the Russian invasion nearly a year ago. Foreign Minister Cohen made a clear statement of support for Ukraine, but he failed to condemn Russia by name. After a year, have we finally made it clear whose side are we on and is Israel all in? I think that uh, it's not necessary to say whose side we are on. We have clear interests which uh, are affected by the Russian presence uh, in Russia, in Syria. This is not, nothing new. But I think to some extent, uh, this visit uh, indicates some kind of tilt toward uh, Ukraine. Uh, after all, uh, the foreign minister made time at the beginning of his uh, tenure uh, to go to, uh, to Ukraine. Uh, it signals probably uh, that Israel uh, is interested in being closer to the Western position. Uh, but still, I don't uh, think that we gave up on the idea to uh, uh, not to en endanger our relations Professor, uh, with Russia. Professor, every time a Ukrainian official speaks, they speak about Israeli air defense systems, which could be a real game changer, especially for civilians living in, in, in uh, cities in Ukraine. That's the, probably the biggest thing that they're looking for. Is there any chance that we're moving in that direction? Uh, I seriously doubt it because uh, we need those uh, systems for our own security. We are also a country at war, and our first uh, obligation is to defend the Israeli civilians. We don't have extra Iron Dome batteries, and uh, we need actually more for our own defense. Moreover, uh, the uh, transfer of such types of weapons to uh, Ukraine uh, may uh, uh, create a situation in which they fall into the hands of the Russians and uh, afterwards uh, the technology is uh, moved to Iran. So I think we should be careful in this, on this uh, issue. Visited Babi Yar and he placed a wreath in the memory of those who, who perished there in 1941. Uh, it's been reported at the time that the site was damaged and during the war there was also a visit he also made a visit to Bucha, the site of the alleged civilian massacre of Ukrainian civilians by Russian soldiers last year. Do you think the symbolism of the two visits was lost on Russia or Ukraine? I don't think we should compare Babi Yar to Bucha. Bucha, if I'm correct, and we really don't know exactly, but we are talking about a few hundred people butchered by uh, the Russian army. While at Babi Yar, we're talking about many thousands of Jews. Uh, it's not the same. It's not the same tragedy. Of course, uh, it is fueled by, uh, you know, human uh, nature that is going into the wrong direction. Uh, but those two are two separate events uh, that should, should not be linked together. Do you think that Ukraine was satisfied with the results of this visit by Foreign Minister Cohen? I would say that the Ukrainians have Jewish chutzpah and they are not satisfied by anything. But by uh, Western boots on the ground to help them uh, defend their country against the Russians. So nothing we can do will really satisfy them. Just one last thing, if I could. You've been watching developments in this war. Uh, both the Ukrainians and the Russians seem like they're poised towards some kind of an offensive. Do you expect any, any result to, to happen on the ground in the next months? We actually discussed this issue uh, at a conference uh, the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security had last week. Uh, actually, uh, most uh, experts believe that this is going to be a prolonged war and we may not see any clear decision uh, by any one of the armies anytime soon. And the war will end probably when one of the sides will be tired of it. And I don't see uh, the Ukrainians getting tired by now. And of course, Russia uh, is, uh, is a big country that can fight for many years. Professor Freiman Barr, thanks so much for being with us and good to see you again. Good to see you.